I worked for something like 28 years in the field as an electrician. And if you know any electricians, you'll discover that things bother electricians sometimes. And I'm going to talk about something that bothered me a lot. And it was the way single phase drawings were, were uh, depicted. And I'll, I'll explain why as we go along. Let's start by looking at phase. Well, well, first of all, what is phase? In electrical terms, phase simply means time. If there's a separation in time between two electrical impulses, it's, it's called a phase separation. And I have at the very top the illustration of a, a three-phase system. And at the bottom, you can see I'm, I've drawn uh, y windings out in a transformer. And the, there's an A phase, a B phase, a C phase, and a neutral. And then up above, I show what happens with the sine wave. There's a, a 120 degree separation between the development of the sine waves. So the A phase, the black one starts off at one point, and then 120 degrees later, you have the red B phase, and the C phase is 120 degrees separated, and you can kind of see how that works. They're all, they're all developed up in, in, at separate times, all three of them. Uh, single phase, by definition, is voltage and current uh, uh, develop on a single sine wave, not like that, like this. That's a single phase, and that's what I have depicted. And a 120 volt, 240 volt system uh, is usually drawn like this, and this is correct. It's one transformer and one set of windings, and they center tap it. It's called center tapped. And so between uh, the, the neutral, we call it a neutral conductor, and the one side of the transformer, you get 120 volts, and the neutral and the other side, you get 120 volts. Also, between the two, the two end windings, you get 240 volts. It's a single phase impulse. But often, you would see this drawing above showing what that system looked like on the sine wave. And if you look at it, you can see it's actually showing two sine waves that are separated by 180 degrees. And that, that was 120 on one, 120 on the other, and 240 between them. And that bothered me because they were developed, according to all the rules, on a single phase system. And it really is true that they are. This is one set of windings all going the same direction. It's not two sets tied together going opposite directions. If that was the case, they would actually cancel one another out and there would be zero voltage. So it truly is one set of windings. And so I like to look at it in a little bit different way. And to analyze it, let's look at a vector. If we had a vector and we we'd assumed that we had current flow going one direction. So I have current flow going this direction through the transformer. And what you'll discover is the fact that you have a center tap here you're referencing when you measure voltage is what's creating what appears to be two separate impulses, but it's really not. And so uh, I will show you what really happens in a, single in, in a single phase transformer. You really get this. You get 240 volts here on the positive side and 240 on the negative side. That really is what you get. And the 120 volts actually is, in, is, is half of it. It would come up like this, like this, and it'd be half of it here. It would be the 120 volt. 120 there, 120 there, 120 there. It all is developed on one sine wave. But it appears to be two because of this. If I take my meter and I reference the neutral conductor, and I take a measurement here, you can see that I have that arrow going. Uh, if I'm if you imagine yourself standing here at this point, at that point, if you can see this, I've got that arrow going away from me. If I'm at this point where I'm measuring, but if I drop down to here and leave my reference there, the arrow is coming toward me. Can you see that? The arrow is coming toward me this time. The arrow is going away this time. There is a realistic separation of time. Uh, in, in as far as your meter sees it. And so it would appear you would have this. It would be something like this on there. But it, in, in reality, it is all developed on the one sine wave. And it's simply a matter of how you reference it as you read it and how it shows that it would be separated by 180 degrees when it's really not. I'm going to read something to you. Um, I, I don't want to get twisted up trying to memorize this. So I'll just read it to you. When my partner behind the camera and I started this channel, we both agreed we want to keep things straightforward and simple. 
I especially wanted to avoid overly slick, slick and lengthy productions. Given that, you will notice our mistakes now and then. Often we will note them with on-screen comments and not reshoot videos. That brings me to this video. At the end of my presentation, I misspoke and essentially said something to the effect there is a realistic time difference between the development of the two 120 volt sine waves in a 120 240 volt system. This is incorrect and contradicts everything I said previously. The sine waves illustrating these systems are often drawn separated by 180 degrees for the reason I explained while holding the meter. Using instantaneous captures with test instruments with the black probes at the neutral point and the red lead on one end of the 240 volt winding and the other instrument on the other end of the 240 volt winding, the meter polarity is different for each meter relative to how the instantaneous direction of current flow is. However, it is important to note that the actual sine waves are not physically separated by 180 degrees in space. The representation of them being 180 degrees apart is conceptual uh, a conceptual simplification used to illustrate their relative phase relationship. In reality, both sine waves exist simultaneously and they are combined to create the, the 240 potential difference between them and the two hot wires. The voltage between each hot wire and the neutral is 120 volts. So, while the sine waves are depicted as being 180 degrees apart in the diagrams, it is important to understand that this is a conceptual representation of their phase relationship and not physical separation. And finally, I need to note that when I show the 120 240 volt values at the peak of the sine waves, I am also doing that for illustration only. Those voltage values for anyone with a more technical mind are actually the true RMS values. Thank you for watching us. Be sure and like us and hit the subscribe button. We'll be dropping new videos weekly, usually on Sunday nights. And finally, visit us at takingmeasure.net we have a lot of content there and also a book available.